Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray you're having a magnificent day today. I pray God is filling your heart with joy as he has done with me. I'm having the most wonderful time with my daddy this morning. He's full of energy, full of life, and he's full of fun. I know this is only brief moments, but when it happens... God fills us with so much joy and delight that it's like he gives us another spoonful of that medicine that is only given by him that gives you the joy and the peace. Now, today I want to talk to you about something that we are seeing and it does pull us down, my loves. I know it pulls us down, but the coming of Christ is so soon. We need that little burst of energy so that we can come forward with him, full of the joy of anticipation of his coming. You know it could be as soon as Pentecost. Pentecost did not the Holy Spirit come down to us. And is it not the restrainer within us? And would it not make sense that at Pentecost, when it came down, it also leaves with us? Makes a lot of sense. Not saying it's going to happen, but just think of it. Jesus was born around Pentecost. So I know some people say Christmas, but the Bible doesn't say that at all. The Bible says... That on the, what was it, on the sixth or seventh month? Oh, I can't remember. I think it was the sixth month that um, it was in Luke. It doesn't matter, but read Luke. And it says something like, on this month, um, Mary went to see Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was six months pregnant at that time, which means Mary... Um, Elizabeth was pregnated in Nisan, the first month. The Passover time, she was um, became pregnant then. She was six months, and I'm sure it was in Savan, um, the month of Savan, which was the sixth month that Mary visited her. That was straight after she herself was impregnated. And then, so... John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus Christ, Jesus, son of Joseph. Um, Christ is not his name, it's his title. Um, so you add, um, say, 38 weeks onto that. They say it's 40 weeks, but that's not how you count. Well, that's how you officially count pregnancy, but that takes into account, as you know, all of you mothers that have gone through this, they count 40 from your last period. Excuse the language, gentlemen, but ladies know what I'm talking about. So it was from then they counted 40 weeks. Isn't that amazing? 40 weeks, 40 weeks in the birth, 40 years in the wilderness, judgments of 40 years, 40 years, 40 years. Isn't it wonderful? God's messages are all over the Bible. But you take 38 weeks, which is the truth, because God wasn't speaking about um, the 40 weeks as in from her last period. He was speaking about from the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. So... Holy Spirit entered, Jesus was in the womb when he met with John the Baptist and the Spirit leapt in John when he came. That was the six-month mark of John the Baptist. He came around and he was born three months later. He was inseminated in Nisan, six months in Savan when Mary met, then another three months on till he was born. So seventh, eighth, the ninth Hebrew month. 
but that means that Jesus had to go through to the third month to be born. And what happened in the third month? Pentecost. Is it not possible, my loves? I'm not giving you days and dates, but is it not possible that we could be even this little morsel? It's like a a fun bit of of joy that God is giving us that it could be then. It could be another day, but it could be then. So he said, study to make yourself approved. Every word in the Bible is for meat for us. There's enough milk. We've had the milk. The milk is joyous and bliss and it, it is comforting. But the meat gives us our satisfaction. It fills us. So let's get into the meat. Enjoy what God tells us. Live on the expectations that he is coming because he is true. And when the days are pulling you down and they will pull you down, remember his promises and remember these little tidbits he gives you of expectations and when could it be? Isn't it exciting to look at when could it be? It could be today. But here's a date we can look at and, okay, not the date, but it's a possibility. And it gives us that, oh, well, stay ready. It, it could be the bus is on its way. Which bus stop is it going to be? Are we going to see it yet? Keep ready. Don't ever put off your, your wedding gown. Don't ever... Turn out your lamp, but remember, keep on your armour. Armour is very important. What did um, Paul tell Timothy about the coming time? And we are in that time. But now, I, I did write it down, but I've got it on my computer so I can read it easily. Just bear with me. These are the signs of the last days according to Paul in 2 Timothy. Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous times. Not going to be easy for us. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Um, excuse me just a moment, because I don't have time to talk to you. Oh, and yes, yes, yes. Isn't that what they're doing? Loving themselves. Everything is for them. Nothing is for others. It's always about them. They're selfish, aren't they? Number one, lovers of selves. Number two, covetous. How many times do you see people wanting what somebody else has? It's depicted in all of our lives. The ads are saying they've got that, you need that. Everything is about coveting nowadays. Number three, boasters. Well, everybody around you is boasting and occasionally we do it too. We don't realise we're doing it, but we do it. Number four, proud. Whoa, haughty if you think you're above others. Right. Five blasphemers, impious to God. Wow. Is not that every second word some people are saying is blaspheming God? Number six, disobedient to parents. Now on this one, let me say, all parents are not good people. God knows that. But God expects us to be respectful to them, even if they are not good. It's difficult. That one's a difficult one for many. But he doesn't mean obey them in sin. But when they are leading you the right path, you are to do as they have said. If a parent is bringing you up in right standing with God, you obey that right standing. 
but you also never disrespect your parents. That's an important thing. Don't disrespect them. They brought you into life. Whether they wanted to or not, they did it. They could have killed you, but they didn't. In this day and age, all the parents that are killing their children, in the womb and out of the womb, it is heartbreaking to us and to God. But this is the sign of the times. They're unthankful, they're ungracious about everything they do. They have a, an attitude of, I deserve that, so why wouldn't I have it? They don't thank, you know, 20, 30 years ago when I was in a particular job and every time someone did something for me, I said, thank you. And do you know what? People were angry at me for saying thank you. Why do you say that? It's annoying. It annoyed them that I said thank you, that I was thankful for what others were doing. It is. It has become a time now when people don't even say it. Keep saying it. Keep being thankful because unthankfulness is a sign of worldliness. They're unholy. They're wicked. Let's look around. We are there. Every one of these can be ticked off. Number nine we're up to without natural affection. Well, uh, mm, mm, yes, you know what I mean. To say it now, you'd be stricken off the computers, but you know what I mean. They are unholy in many, many ways. Without natural affections, without natural affections, unholy without natural affections. Those two are going together, aren't they? Number 10, truce breakers. They are unable to be pleased. No matter what you do, they cannot be pleased or placated. They want to be offended. Is this not the time of offence? Oh, my goodness. False accusers, they're constantly accusing people of things they didn't know. The Me Too movement, how many men were falsely accused for someone that wanted 15 minutes of fame? Me Too, Me Too. There were some legitimate complaints amongst all of that, but they were overshadowed by far by the lies of the false accusers. But it's not just false accusers on those things. It's false, falsely accused of things you're doing in your job. Falsely accused of things you're doing in your life. That is Satan. That is slanderers. And they are everywhere and they are active. Number 12, he says incontinent. Now, <laughs> okay, a lot of the elderly have become the word incontinent. That's not what he's talking about. It's an old word. It's not a modern use of the word. It means powerless and without self-control. God made me do it. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. You made me do it. It's always somebody else's fault. It's they are without self-control. They just get addicted to things in life. Number 13, fierce. They're savages. All the riots that have never happened for centuries, people didn't riot. And suddenly we are in this frenzy of righteous behaviour. Riotous, not righteous, riotous behaviour. There are riots and murders everywhere. Number 14, here is one that really affects you. They are despisers of those that are good. They're hostile to your virtue, to any virtue. They're now coming out on the news and calling virtue hate speech, saying you are violent in your words if you speak the Bible. They hate 
virtue because they love their sin. Your virtue shows up their sin and they do not like to be seen for what they are, so they must pull you down. This is a, a hard one on us. 15, they're traitors. They betray or they give in to the enemy. So they can be someone who just gives in, throws in the hand of God and goes over to the other side. Or they can be people who actually betray you to the other side. Many of our governments nowadays are traitors to their own people. Putting into effect things that will kill or disavow their own people. They are traitors. And they will have the condemnation of traitors. But we need to pray for them that they come to right standing before it's too late. And it could be too late today or tomorrow or Pentecost. Keep that one. Now, number 16, heady-minded. They're rash, they're headlong. They just blunder into things without thinking about the truth of it or the consequences all day, every day now. Then number 17, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Well, my loves. Paul has said it all in that. That is this world today, everywhere. And the last one he mentioned was having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. They contradict and reject the miraculous powers of miracles. Even people in the church deny the miraculous powers of God. There are so many of them nowadays who say, I believe, I believe, I believe everything in the Bible except. I believe everything except. It's all or it's nothing. You know that? It's all or nothing. Either God's word is true or it's false. You cannot pretend to be a believer if you don't believe the word. That's what a believer is. And what was the conclusion that Paul was telling Timothy? From such turn away. Well, turning away is not easy in this world, is it? But you can't always turn away physically, can you? Sometimes we are in a situation we cannot turn away physically. But we can turn away spiritually. And again, we are told in Ephesians, how do we do this? Number one, we put on the whole armour of the Lord. Every day, put it on because the wiles of the devil will come after us. He will find any chink in our armour. So put it on, put it on carefully. Even if you have to create yourself a a religion, uh, not a, a um, I don't know the word for it where you go through the same actions every day and make it a physical rehearsal sort of a thing to put it on. But then once you've got that on, Paul again tells us in Ephesians, this will help you, this will help you. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So even if they're being wicked, don't try to hold, get rid of your anger. Anger is of the devil. Try to get rid of anger. I have had it. I know what it feels like. But instead, make, make your speech that of God's speech, that the hearers may be edified. Grieve not that Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let, this is the important bit, my loves, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamour and evil speaking be put away from you, as well as all malice. Put that away. God will fill you with peace, but put that away. B 
Be ye kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God Christ, for God, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. So for Christ's sake, we forgive others, because God has forgiven us for Christ's sake. That's the essence of getting through another day. You've seen the checklist coming down. There are more checklists. This is just one checklist to tell you this is the day. This is the time. We are in the last day of the pre-tribulation. We are ready. Keep ready. If Satan comes against you with his wiles, Use the word of God. Don't be proud thinking I am better than them. I know more than them. Remember the only word is in the Bible. We eat it. We fill ourselves with it. But it doesn't mean that God has given up on others. Don't feel that that one, even though they're evil today, they're about to go through something that may change their mind. So have patience, but turn away. Turn away. If you can't walk away, turn away. You don't have to fellowship with evil, spiritually or physically. If you can't get out physically, then turn away spiritually. But turn away. When you turn away from that, you're turning to God. Remember, he is there for you always. Now, I will have to go, my loves. Um, I pray that you are going to have a wonderful day. I already know I am. God is working so miraculously. He has given Dad and I both a new spark in life. We've been ill for for a little while. Um, we, I didn't think I was going to make it to another video, but here I am. And so God be praised. Um, and Dad has come through another trial, and he is now on the on the side of recovery, and we are both very delighted to be with you today. God bless you all. May His face shine upon you. I will pray for you daily, and nightly. <laughs> I, I'm a creature of habit, um, but always I will pray for you. I will pray for your peace, for your safety. For those who have asked for prayers, I am praying. And for your loved ones. For those who didn't ask for prayers, it doesn't matter. I'll still pray for you. And let us all pray together for one another and for all those across the world that in Jesus' holy name, God will save God bless you all. He loves you so much. May his face to shine upon you and give you peace. May his word abound in you and give you joy. May the meat of his word fill you and satisfy you, for he is satisfaction. God bless you all, my loves. Until there, possibly, remember, the Holy Spirit came down at Pentecost. Jesus was born round Pentecost. Maybe it is taken away at Pentecost. Who knows? But there's a chance. And I'm hanging on to that now, but it could be today. Could be tomorrow. Could be any day. So stay ready. Stay excited. Don't let the world pull you back. Keep moving forward. Can't you feel... They are trying to pull you back. It's, it's like this slow slime coming off you. Keep pushing forward because Jesus is ahead. Let's cut the ties of the slime, okay? God bless you. I love you so much. Bye-bye, my loves. Dad is up and about. So exciting. I love you. Bye.